And this is where the whole concept of decad originated from and where people were encountering massive issues with their uh, Johnson function to the point where you would literally, you could have like a raging libido, but your dank would just be completely non-functional for anything besides urination. So guys, Derek, moreplatesmoredates.com. Today we are going to be talking about what it feels like to be on DECA or Nandrolone. Actually, Nandrolone, because everyone always forgets that decanoate is an ester. Well, not everyone, but like the random motherfuckers in the uh, comment section on the anabolic steroid family tree videos who are always like, where is DECA? And we all know at this point that DECA is not the drug. Nandrolone is the drug. DECA, decanoate is an ester. So anyways... The Trendalone video did pretty well. What it feels like to be on trend. A lot of people uh, found it entertaining and informative. So I felt like why not do a series on what it feels like to be on blank. And then you, you just fill in the blank with whatever compound it is that I have experience with that I can uh, you know have some sort of testimonial about. So anyways, Nandrolone, I have experiences on it on way too much test as well as D-ball D at the same time. I have experience with just um, test with it. I have experience with Nandrolone on its own. I have experience with it with estrogen. So I have like a pretty comprehensive, you know, outline at least from what, at least my personal individual response as to how it responds in certain situations. So let's start on the hyper extreme side of the spectrum, which is how people are usually running it, which is with a fat over <laughs> overwhelming dose of test and maybe other shit. So at that dose, it's highly problematic for a lot of people. And this is where the whole concept of decadic originated from and where people were encountering massive issues with their uh, Johnson function to the point where you would literally, you could have like a raging libido, but your dank would just be completely non-functional for anything besides urination. So it's like, and I experienced this too. And I talked about this in uh, one of my last videos where uh, I had a combination of tests d -ball and DECA and it was like the worst cycle ever. It was like the most disgusting I've ever looked. My blood pressure was absolutely ruthless. I was a walking nosebleed. Um, I would have ED to the point that I could take fucking 100 milligrams of Viagra and still have ED. It was just nuts. So anyways, the reason for that though is largely driven through Nandrolone's inherent progestogenic activity which can make testosterone and any other compounds that are substrate for aromatase significantly more problematic. Nandrolone on its own does not inherently aromatize to any significant degree. It is actually far less estrogenic than um, the parent compound it is derived from, which is testosterone. So testosterone is a far more potent substrate for aromatase and aromatizes significantly more into straight bioidentical estradiol. Um, whereas Nandrolone is like minimally estrogenic and only to a minor degree. And while this can be a uh, advantageous for those who are like highly susceptible to estrogenic side effects from testosterone you know and that's where the nandrolone cycle sort of come into play where you could theoretically achieve a lower estrogen burden which for some people who have poor metabolism of estrogens or just have a you know are way too fat or whatever the reason is you know some people are going to respond very poorly to especially super physiological doses of testosterone if they are you know one of those individuals or you know a myriad of other um, scenarios, lifestyle, genetic, life, uh, diet, etc., body composition induced scenarios that could lead to estrogenic overload essentially in a testosterone user that may otherwise feel actually better on a nandrolone cycle. Um, but when you have uh, the two in unison with one another, not only do you often find people who have such a highly problematic dose of testosterone where they already need an AI to control their use because they're already using more than they can handle, but then they throw a 19 nor on top that is progestogenic and can exacerbate the estrogenicity of the testosterone, thus compounding into this fucking supernova of ED essentially <laughs> and causing a myriad of issues, most notably in the dick department, as well as mentally. You'll hear often hear some bodybuilders, it's like very hit or miss with Nandrol and some will say it's, they love it, and then some will say they fucking hate it and it makes them like super depressed. And honestly, like most of the time, it is what they are using with it rather than the compound inherently itself from what I can tell, at least 
overall. That does not mean that nandrolone on its own is like problem free for every single person though. Definitely not, but it's definitely a compound that has nuance to its use because it can be problematic in unison with compounds in a unique in a unique way that is not necessarily a detriment of the product mechanism of action itself. Rather, it is the combination of things causing a nuclear clusterfuck of poor outcomes that would otherwise not have occurred if you used a more reasonable dose of the estrogen base or, you know, perhaps just didn't even use, uh, um, or perhaps just like avoided that compound entirely. And you had, you know, just your nandrolone with, you know, maybe a more reasonable dose of something else or maybe nothing at all. You know, it depends on the person. So anyways, on one side of the spectrum with testosterone or with other compounds that convert to estrogen, um, I was like hypersexual on it, but my dick didn't even fucking work. So was that, it wasn't too helpful. Um, however, once I learned how to control estrogen, the combination was actually very good for me personally. Um, and I did not experience any of those kind of like, you know, like wild, uh, depression type symptoms or, um, you know, have, uh, like a fucked up, like paranoia or anything like that. Like trend is more so the thing that makes you paranoid and like everything's out to get you. Whereas nandrolone, despite it being a 19 nor and also being progestogenic, it is not as, uh, it does not really behave in the same way as trend. It is almost like the best way I can describe nandrolone is it's like a toned down version of testosterone. It's almost like testosterone's less aggressive and less, I don't know, motivated <laughs> brother <laughs> who still produces as much muscle gain as the testosterone, if not more actually milligram for milligram. But in like a personality context, it is more smooth and curbed and calm and collected and chill. It's more like numb too, like emotionally. Like if you d ever did like on the opposite side of the spectrum. So on this side of the spectrum, you can have a very volatile, either in positive or negative response based on your response to whatever your base is and the dosage of your base relative to the dose of the 19 nor that you're using in that cycle. So it is a uh, very hit or miss in that regard for many individuals, but it is largely the choice of dose and the combination of compounds used in that scenario where it can be either greatly elevate your state, make you hypersexual, blah, 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 or very easily could also make you very, uh, you know, I don't know, like sad is a good word, like emotional. Um, it's, it's not like trend though, where trend is like, is like just paranoid, like fucking short tempered, not rage, but like snappy fucking paranoia essentially where everything is going wrong and the most obscure thing in the world that you could possibly imagine is definitely happening right now even though on any other you know any other time you would never ever fucking conceive that that scenario would actually be a real thing so anyways that is not like that but it can make you you know quite emotional and or depressed if you have this combination of basically a poorly planned cycle based on your own genetics and your own uh lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. So now on this side of the spectrum where you have a much less uh, problematic, like hybrid of things going on because you have, let's just say you're not using fucking test at 500 milligrams plus, you're not using D-ball at 50 milligrams on top of your testosterone, on top of your DECA, etc., And you just have like a more like, I don't know, like Nandrolone used to be used clinically for HRT until they realized it was not really a makeshift alternative for most individuals. And it was not going to exactly work long term for the majority of people. And it would still, you know, cause viralization just the same. And by the way, something to note about that is nandrolone is one of the most well tolerated in terms of masculinization more, not just because of its tissue selectivity, but more so because it five alpha reduces into dihydronandrolone in areas that have five alpha reductase, like your scalp, etc. So that's why it's so hair friendly. However, there's not very much five alpha reductase in the area responsible for your actual, how deep your voice is. So this is what I speculate to be the reason why nandrolone at like very, very, what would be considered mild dosages in the clinical literature will still cause voice deepening in a significant amount of women, but it's very hair safe simultaneously. So it's almost like the parent compound itself is actually pretty androgenic, but it is its metabolite, or I should say, it's five alpha reduced thing that it metabolizes into um, that is not androgenic whatsoever. So it depends on like which tissue you're referring to as to if it is 
viralization safe or not. So a lot of, you know, for women, it's probably like, it can be problematic in that regard. And for men, it's probably a bit more favorable in that regard because it's very hair safe while simultaneously still being able to support a significant amount of functions that would otherwise end up being like subpar with a lack of androgen stimulation much quicker, if that makes any sense. So like in your muscle, it doesn't 5-alpha reduce into DHN. So you get like peak muscle building effect with simultaneous reduction into DHN in your scalp, making it more hair friendly. And like all of these things that are sort of like really targeted action in terms of what it's doing. So it's favorable in that regard. And because of its, I don't know if it's just its lack of androgenicity as well as in certain tissues, as well as its lack of estrogenicity and its progestational activity is not as much of an issue when there isn't, you know, like all of this heavily aromatizing gear present at the same time too. So it's like the effects, the negative effects it can have when it's, when I used it on its own are much less pronounced and all of the like side effect horror stories you hear kind of about like the decadic, the blah, 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 the blah, blah, blah are a lot less likely to happen, at least from what I've seen and my own personal experience when it's used kind of like, not solo even, but even like in the context of either monotherapy or with like a small, like just enough for physiologic replacement base of estrogen for neuroprotection, cardiovascular health, et cetera. So as long as you're not in this like polar side of the spectrum where you're like upregulating processes that are already problematic, you're sort of on this side of the spectrum, it very much represents, like I said before, testosterone's less aggressive and motivated younger brother who is better at building muscle somehow because <laughs> uh, like milligram for milligram, it's gonna build more muscle. But like after a couple months on nandrolone only with an estrogen base, what I noticed was um, I just had like less oomph in my life, less get up and go, less hyper, um, I don't know, hyper motivation, hyper, uh, I don't know, drive was sort of diminished, very much like numb to certain situations, like emotional curb curbs your emotional response to a significant extent, not in a way that makes you like sad or depressed, but it's more so you just like are more emotionally numb to things in life. Like you're just like meh about shit that would normally like maybe fire you up a bit more. So that is like the best way I can describe how it made me feel personally on one side of the spectrum. I was like hypersexual, hyper blah, blah, blah. But it was largely because of, you know, the factors I outlined in terms of the cycle design that was poorly done. And if I was one of the other individuals, like a lot of other people will report just feeling like absolute dog shit, you know, not feeling just like mentally, not unwell, but just like not a good state of mind. It's not like trend, but it's more just like, you know, sad, down in the dumps, fucking shitty. They don't like it, you know? And some people just can't run it because they just like can't stand feeling like that. Um, and for some people, you know, they they report like brutal blood pressure increases and stuff that forces them to come off. But largely that, again, boils down to their cycle design and, you know, electrolyte intake and a bunch of other fucking shit. So, but anyways, on this side of the spectrum, like I said, very, it's like the numb down, I don't know, like smoothed out version of test because test ultimately is going to drive significant amounts of functions in the body like it's supposed to do but then it also five alpha reduces to dht which is something that significantly drives neurological processes and acute like uh performance outcomes and motivation you know aggressiveness etc and is largely what is like you know, the reason that you even get like full maturation in puberty is because of DHT. So expectedly, it's a big differentiating factor in like a man acting like a man versus acting like somebody who is less, uh, I don't know, not, not less masculine. Like it is technically actually less masculine. Like you don't have as much uh, fucking just drive, get up and go. Whereas at Nandrolone, it's more like, it's not like you're not motivated to do anything in life. It's not like it sucks. It's just less of a aggressive response to things. And you're more just like meh, emotionally, just like not distant, but just numb to things in life in general. So 
you know, it doesn't sound great to some people, but to some people who are like hyper fucking responders in a bad way to testosterone, either in the estrogenic context, in the aggressiveness context, anxiety context, etc., you know, this nandrolone or a combination of the two, there is, you know, significant interplay for some individuals where it seems to make more sense. And obviously, you know, with the the benefits that come from, uh, and it, like it seems to actually be integrated fairly frequently now into HRT protocols, which is very interesting because that is a practice I would think would have been, you know, frowned on not that long ago. Like, frankly, it's not really, even though it's bioidentical and found in trace amounts in the body, it's not like many wouldn't consider that. Like, it's no longer HRT at that point, but it's becoming more widely accepted that it can be integrated into HRT protocols with, you know, reasonable. I don't know, like well tolerated seems to be like, obviously it's one of the most studied compounds in terms of clinical safety and whatnot. So there's not a lot of worry about the combination of the two for a reasonable duration of the time. I don't know. At the end of the day, that is how I felt on it. I can't really describe it better than how emotionally like numb I was to things. Not in a bad way, not in like a sad or depressed way, but just like less oomph in my life. So anyways, if you have experience with it in any capacity, whether it's in combination with other compounds, whether it was on its own, you know, drop it down in the comments down below. It's much appreciated and helps give other people uh, reference points for their own education and make more informed decisions before they haphazardly, you know, jump into drug use, obviously. So um, definitely much appreciated when you guys drop those, those down below. Um, good learning material for everyone who is uh, looking for that. And then also st strokes the good old strokes the good old algorithm, you know? So anyways, uh, if you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below my TRT clinic. I'm um, Gorilla My Nootropic Formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas. I designed myself from scratch. Um, my uh, recommended lab test panels and anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.